I'm going to introduce our keynote speaker today. Um, I'm delighted um, that we're able to have Mr. Mahendra Singhi with us. Um, as I've mentioned, he's the, uh, currently the president of the Cement Manufacturers Association of India, as well as chief executive officer of Dalmia Cement, a company that operates in several regions across India um, and has approximately 27 million tons of capacity. Um, Dalmia Cement um, is ranked globally as the first of number one by the CDP on business readiness for a low carbon economy transition based on its lowest carbon footprint operations and its bold commitments to become carbon negative by 2040. Mr. Singhi himself works tirelessly across a range of sector-related initiatives and serves on the boards of several organizations and commissions in India and abroad. Um, he's also the chairman of the National Council for Cement and Building Materials in India. He's the chairman of the Development Council for Cement Industry, Ministry of Commerce and Industry in India. And globally, he sat on a number of commissions, including the Climate Action Commission of the UN General Assembly and the, Plimus, uh, the Paris Climate Agreement Ceremony on invitation from the ex-UN Secretary General, Mr. Ban Ki-moon. He really is uh, a pivotal um, individual in the Indian cement industry and in the global stage. Um, he has a lot, a lot to say. He's a very positive man as well. And I think that's, uh, that's something that we all need at this time. Um, today, he's going to address the impact of the pandemic in India and the wider cement industry. So I'd like to hand over to you now, please, uh, Mr. Singhi, and I'm going to hopefully show your screen now. Thanks, Mr. Thomas, for a very elaborate introduction, and thanks to International Cement Review for giving this great opportunity to interact with more than 700 people and that too in critical time. So, happy day, my global brothers and sisters. Namaskar. Let me first wish everyone good health, well-being and happiness as these are the greatest assets an individual can have. Today, we are meeting here to talk and understand difficult time due to COVID-19 and way ahead. It's a difficult time for sure, but then I remember a quote of Henry Ford, when everything seems against you, when everything seems against you, remember that airplane takes off against the wind, not with it. And this is the situation which we are facing today and definitely will take on it. So now uh, I would like to talk in a few uh, uh, subjects like What's the global perspective, the Indian perspective, how Indian economy is getting affected, and how Indian cement sector has taken on overall COVID-19, and how it would emerge as a winner. So first, let me take up global perspective. It's well known to each one of us that COVID-19 is creating havoc across the world on lives and and economy. No major country of the world has found any immunity to this pandemic. It is still taking lives. 3.7 million people have been infected with the virus globally, and more than 260,000 precious lives have been lost across the globe. It is a global health crisis and biggest humanitarian challenge since World War II. As of now, only 2% of globally infected populations are under serious or critical condition, which means 98% of the, uh, of the population is still doing well. And let us hope that they would continue to do well with another 2% more. It's a sign of relief in the sense this number could have been higher as well. And friends, this has been possible due to the untiring efforts of Corona variants across the globe. The entire medical fraternity, from doctors, nurses, paramedics to 
sanitization staff and the law enforcement bodies are working day in day at night risking themselves and their families for us so that we can remain safe and sound it's not a normal work it's akin to we're fighting with unknown enemy for protection of humanity all the nations are exploring novel medical treatment and are on hunt for vaccine that will stop this virus in its tracks professionals are in an accelerated mode to find out the solution so let us thank all of them as well also wish an early success to take care of the humanity by getting the right vaccine like right medicine and the right treatment if i talk of global economy dear friends all affected nations are feeling big pressure on their economy due to slow down of all activities as well also nations are facing big pressure on their finances because of large financial stimulus they had to give to keep up the moral and economy of the people high it's anybody's guess but it seems that economic cost of this pandemic may be whooping 4 trillion 4 trillion us dollar un department of economic and social affairs projected overall 1% shrinkage of the global economy due to covid-19 and situation may further escalate in light of this let me talk of india the father of our nation india mahatma gandhi had said it is health that is real wealth and not pieces of gold silver or dollar and these words appear so real and so pragmatic today is world where top leadership in india has put the economy to the back foot to ensure the well being of everyone of course this has not come as easy thing the war room strategy created by the top leadership our honorable prime minister modi ji and the group of ministers chief ministers of the states bureaucracy civil society as one united force against covid-19 has been remarkable i would pay my salute i would give my salute to all these people who have saved our country and the indians friends you must have observed that india moved quickly and proactively and started nationwide lockdown unparalleled nationwide lockdown while calibrating actions day to day so as to fight form with c19 task forces were created in senior level in the government to confront the problem and implement the solutions dynamic classification of the total country whole country into green orange and red band based on covid-19 inspections proved very effective to control the situation now we are also exploring novel medical treatment for community and cure from this disease the order discipline and the support showed by the people of india towards lockdown is testimony of commitment and faith in a country of 1.3 billion people it was the biggest lockdown ever happened in the world and as such the scale is proceeded with such calmness and harmony in between there was some hitch due to migrant laborers who wanted to go back to their native places from major cities of india but it was appreciably dealt by administration in swift manner i also think that our spiritual leaders of the country have also played supportive role in this resilience and discipline shown by our people of india as a result we have good initial signs and it is remarkable that a country like india having 1200 people per square mile has been able to keep the majority of the population safe from covid-19 till now despite introduction of virus in the country in january, january 20 so far there are about 50000 cases in india and unfortunately there has been 1700 deaths of course it is still reasonable to say that the strategy adopted by our prime minister modi and the government and the public 
has helped in flattening the outbreak curve till date. Now, based on this, how it has impacted Indian economy? Most of you must be knowing that India is one of the fastest emerging 2.8 trillion US dollar economy and has also been impacted in a big way due to nationwide lockdown, whose third phase is currently going on. It has been more than 45 days and still it would be another next eight days for lockdown. Few major cities and regions may face longer such restrictions. The lockdown brought all the active activities of economy to almost grinding a halt. Estimated per day losses may be per day losses may be 4.5 billion US dollar. It's a big, big loss. But now, with economic activities opening up in piecemeal and in parts of the country, over Overall, GDP would experience a big jolt. Part of March and full month of April was full of washout. And now, even in May this year also, only 10 to 15% economic activities have started. Looking to the uncertain behavior of COVID-19, it's anybody's guess what uh, GDP number for FY21, 2021, which is April 20 to March 21 would be. But if we sum up the various projections, speculations, guesstimate, which have come up from credible organizations, maybe from IMF, ABD, ADB, or maybe various consultants or various Indian organizations also, I would say on a broad optimistic way, the GDP may be between Point, negative 0.5 to negative 2%. And if you look at this contraction, friends, it is the contraction which has, which would be happening first time in last four decades. And I'm sure it would be negatively impacting all sectors in a big way. And more particularly, auto sector, hospitality sector, construction sector, and many other core sectors also. So it's a gloomy situation, but we are quite hopeful. Now the way steps have been taken, the way flattening in India is happening, and the way we expect that there may be a new type of uh, revival, and then the, our economy may start to look up from October 20 onwards, and may stabilize from January 21. Of course, still one has to take into account the uncertainty of COVID-19. Having understood the negative part of the economy, still, I feel India would be in a better position to bounce back because of its various past economic activities, fiscal policies, and possibilities of shift of many manufacturing activities in time to come from China to India. Indian corporates have also fully geared themselves in this time of uncertainty and are adopting best practices of strategy, technology, so as to re-gear themselves. Now, having talked about Indian cement, uh, Indian economy, let me come to the brass text, which is what Indian cement industry is, how it would be faring. So let me first say that the Indian cement sector is the largest in the world in cement manufacturing, if we exclude China, and we have 550 million ton of capacities, and we produced last year in April 19 to March 20 about 335 million tons of cement. In the cement sector is one of the most efficient in terms of energy and environmental standards globally. Such companies like what uh, Mr. Thomas also introduced, Dalvia Cement are leading the global low carbon economic transition in cement sector and it is also having 40% less carbon footprints than the global average. Now to tackle this COVID-19 problem, the cement industry has remained in the forefront in this fight against this coronavirus in India by taking care of people and the plants. The first and foremost thing was 
that since uh, people are our ethos, so we have to take care of people. And that is how we supported overall all cement sectors. They have supported their uh, employees, direct, indirect, their families and local communities. And then this is how we all come as a social uh, uh, element. As a people-centric approach, we also offered our plant premises, our guest house uh, premises, our playgrounds to the various state government local administration to use them as and when required as a hospital, as a uh, isolation center, so that uh, the people don't feel crunch of such facilities. Now, we are now also supporting in one way or other medical equipment and financial support. We are happy to say that we have been able to keep our operations and employees fully safe and it remains like this and would remain like this. Now, in this whole period, all Indian civilian sectors also contributed in a big way socially by providing meals and support to the needy people, have contributed also in the efforts of India uh, central government and the state government by contributing financially so that the governments can also take effective steps. Now, since last 20th April, after partial upliftment of lockdown, slowly and slowly, productions are again gearing up. We are starting and slowly things would be better in terms of production, in terms of uh, dispatch and sale, and in terms of construction. Now the challenges which we would be facing would be that how to keep the people safe and healthy. So one of the things which uh, industry took uh, and made efforts was to create COVID compliance standard, which was also in tune with the government of India's uh, uh, advices and instructions. And then have ensured almost in every plant and every organization of cement that we all are COVID compliance standards. And then we would be taking care of people. Of course, physical distancing would be required to be made. So we all decided that though we would be keeping physical distance in place, but at the same time, we will not keep social distance. We'll meet them virtually so that there is no social distancing. But the major challenges which would be coming up now is that wherever people, people have migrated from one place to their hometown to get back them in time and to keep the production up as per the requirement of the country. Second important challenge would be the transportation of goods. The supply chain system has to come in place and now truckers have to come back and the roads and the areas have to now slowly slowly open up except the areas which are in red zone, which are containment area. Then, based on this, we are uh, quite hopeful that in three to four months uh, time period, when migrant labor are back to construction site, government uh, considering the green, yellow, and uh, red zones, they allow the activities to start, we will be able to serve the construction activity in whatever way it is required. Cement, sect, cement companies are fully now ready to serve the need of the society, the need of the construction sector. The, another challenge would be like 60-65% consumption of cement in India goes for house building and 30-35% may be on infrastructure which is supported by government or by private sectors as well as also it goes to uh, industry. Now, for 60-65% uh, housing demand, it would come uh, quite slowly look into the mood of the uh, people because now people would like to conserve cash, people would like to go for some other uh, areas of expenditure but, but would like to save because 
there is uncertainty of how COVID-19 would take the shape. Secondly, now, Government of India and the state governments, they are spending in a big way their finances for taking care of the COVID-19 problem. And on the account of that, and then maybe they may also come out with more financial stimulus in addition to uh, what they have come out in past. Based on that, government may find constraints in spending money on infrastructure. So if that happens, then definitely that would be a great challenge, which can only be solved by the government of India. We do expect the way government is now sharing their thoughts that they would like to support the employment of the people by putting a lot of financial stimulus also, by supporting the migrant workers also, so that they come back for work and then customer activities restarts. And once that starts, then definitely economic activities will go up. So what we feel is that in time to come, the slowly, slowly capacity utilization, which may be today at the level of say 10, 15%, would inch up and inch up. And from October 20 itself, it should start showing good signs. And from January 21, we expect that the capacity utilization may come to a level of 60%. Our expectation in totality for capacity utilization for the year April 20 to March 21 is, is around 45 to 50%. But quite possible that when we enter April 21, the new fiscal year, it would be better. So important is that this capacity utilization would impact in a big way on the cost of cement. The way uh, fixed cost, including uh, uh, employee costs, interest costs, then it becomes totally uh, dependent only on 45, 50% capacity utilization, then the overall cost will go up. And that would definitely impact uh, uh, cost uh, profitability in a big way. One, Revenue will be hit by lower capacity utilization. And secondly, the profitability would be hit by higher fixed cost and interest cost. But still, we are hopeful that we will be able to survive in this difficult time. Now, what are few, I would say, positive parts of the whole story on the cost part? And that is that we are uh, seeing now, there are now the signs that the cost of imported petco, cost of uh, imported coal may come down by 15-20%. Already it started uh, coming down and that may to some extent give relief to cement sector in India. Secondly, when uh, operations become more viable or uh, because of some financial stimulus uh, government may give, it, it may be a better sign for us. Another challenge which we would be facing would be the liquidity problem. So because of disruption for at least two to three months and lower capacity utilization and lower revenues, there would be big impact on working capital. So I'm sure the way government is thinking, government would be supporting to uh, uh, prep up and to mop up more, more liquidity so that uh, cement sector and other core sectors don't uh, face such problem. Now, let me say this uh, pandemic would be definitely impacting us in a big way, but at the same time, Indian cement sector is fully, uh, uh, fully committed that we would come as a winner out of this. And then based on this, Based on this, now our thought process is that uh, we would be facing right time, better time in, uh, from October onwards. Now, what this COVID-19 has taught us in India, so I would just highlight a few things. One, COVID period has become the biggest CO2 reduction program in the world, though world has been talking since last many years how to bring down CO2 emissions. But if we look at today's environment, 
it's one of the best since last 1937 it was such a clean environment was seen and now it's the case so today we are seeing cleanest environment now river bottom uh, river water of india has become drinkable and the air pollution levels have dropped significantly the biodiversity across the world has shown dramatic improvements further the one uh, silver lining has been that covid 19 lockdown has given us in india good time to enhance bonding with family by working from home also and otherwise also now we have now become more frugal found new ways of remaining con uh, connected and then we have also found that having physical distancing how we can reduce social distancing and how we can come uh, vir vir virtually connected we have to now see that how and what we should do as a strategy as a cement sector that uh, and uh, things become normal we become better off than what we were before covid 19 and for that purpose we'll have to re-strategize re-imagine re our processes we'll have to reimagine how we deal with we get connected with our uh, customers our vendors and the digital technology the meet, new uh, technology meeting uh, etc that would also go in a big way and that would support definitely the cement sector. So I would say that COVID-19 situation gets resolved soon and not only from India, but through the entire world. This is our wish that yes, it should go away from the whole world. And friends, thanks for your patient hearing. And now I would like to end my thoughts by invoking the words, ancient words from our ancient text, which in Sanskrit says, Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina, Sarve Santu Nan Ramaya, Sarve Badrani Pashantu Ma, Kanindudu Bhagyavarate, Om Sankatha, Sankatha, Sankatha. In English, it says, friends, Om, may all be happy. May all be free from illness. May all see what is auspicious. May no one suffer. Om, peace, peace, peace. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Singhi, and um, for, the, for the words at the end, greatly appreciated, I'm sure, by everyone. Um, would we be able to ask a few questions? We have a few questions from um, some of the audience. Um, they're relating mainly to the recovery, um, the economic recovery. Um, you've spoken quite positively about um, the actions of the government um, and the need for stimulus. Um, I guess people are asking, um, what kind of stimulus do you think um, can be expected um, over the coming years, particularly from you said from October, I guess after the monsoon, we're going to see the kind of um, re-establishing of the industry and hopefully, you know, a, a good start to the new year. What kind of stimulus do you expect, or will you be arguing for um, from the government? Yes, you know, one of the major stimulus which cement sector expect is that they would be supporting real estate, the construction sector, as well as the workers so that once they start working, then definitely cement demand would prop up and then uh, we will go in harmony. Second would be how government can support the industry, not only the cement sector, but almost all sectors by providing uh, some, some sort of working capital leverages. Third would be that whatever say payments uh, which we are supposed to make uh, India as a taxes, etc., they get deferred for a few months. We don't want the uh, subsidy, but we want some uh, time period in which government can support the sector and supports, uh, can help in industry to come out as a winner. Fourth one would be, fourth one would be the commitment of the government that they would be 
continuing to implement the infrastructure projects which they had already planned and i'm happy to share that particularly on road project side our dynamic uh, minister uh, mr nitin gadkari ji he has already started those uh, road projects in many parts of the country and that has seen and that has given some boost to the cement requirement and lastly i, I, I would say one close interaction of government and industry would be required so that time to time uh, whatever stimulus is required that can be offered we are quite uh, aware that government has also their uh, resources constraint so in whatever way it's good for the indian economy the government should act sure um, there are some other questions relating to the um the situation with employment do you see um, a, a high level of redundancy in the sector as far as the indian cement sector is concerned one we all are committed to our people and that's why we have seen in the month of march also and in the month of april also one there is no layoff second all people have been paid as they used to be paid when they were working or when they were not working so accordingly payments have been made and since we all are quite hopeful that in time to come situation would further improve and that's why there is no question of such layoff only or only dilemma is that we have when we have to work with 30% 40% or 60% uh, uh, workforce on account of physical distancing so how to solve that problem so those discussions are on that how to uh, use them in the right uh, uh, right and possible way okay um i have one question um looking at the kind of general financial strength of the indian cement industry um this comes from ian riley from the world cement association do you feel that most indian companies are strong enough in a strong enough cash position to cope with the post covid cash flow challenge okay and the second is is it likely that covid will precipitate an increase in mna activity in india i guess that follows so so most of the uh, companies uh, of in cement sector are uh, uh, i would not say cash rich but then i would say that they can be distant the problem of few months and uh, when we are able to again Uh, ramp up our uh, sales and the revenue from october onwards i think uh, broadly everybody would survive of course there can be various factors not just because of cement company as such but maybe uh, any groups problem etc so on that account there may be few cases of mna otherwise also it happens so even uh, i would say during covid and post covid also something would happen the mnda activities are the regular feature and um just um briefly in terms of uh, cement prices do you see any movement now in prices or do you have any outlook for how they might move in the coming months it's 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 difficult to it's difficult to project and as a president of indian cement manufacturers association definitely i can't talk on on prices and looking to uncertainties of uh, covid-19 i don't think anybody can guesstimate also sure um just one final question is is the, the longer term view um how disruptive has this situation been to the ongoing um investment programs of the indian cement industry and also in relation to the environmental investments how how will they be impacted and i guess in the longer term you know we we've mentioned at the start your uh, your commitment to 40% uh, reduction in co2 um sorry the the co2 free by 2040 these kind of longer term targets how how will they be impacted do you think yes. so so let, let me first say for our uh, overall indian cement sector then i'll come to dalmas cement from indian cement sector point of view i may see or we may see that uh, the investments may get postponed by few months or few quarters but but they would they won't be dropped because everybody feels 
that India would be a five trillion economy in time to come. So all have to go gear up for their uh, production levels. And Indian cement sector is also quite conscious of the meeting environmental standards, which are global in nature. And for that also, I think work would continue. And considering the regulations which we have, the stringent and, uh, regu uh, and monitoring regulations which we have in India, I'm sure each and every cement company would comply with their uh, uh, long-term environmental investment. Now, coming to Dalbia cement, it's just a matter of two months or three months delay in uh, 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 continuing the investment because of not the funds problem. We have the right funds with us. We have the right team with us. But maybe because of certain migrant laborers, project laborers, or something else. But otherwise, we are fully committed to uh, go towards our roadmap. And I may share with you that the, our project of carbon capture and utilization, which is the biggest uh, in the world cement industry, we are already on track. Now, uh, feasibility report uh, process is on. And I'm sure that uh, in few years time, uh, we'll be able to come out with a solution, which will not be a solution for in uh, cement sector, but the many core sectors uh, that how carbon capture and replacement can be one of the way to bring down overall CO2 emissions. And lastly, lastly, I would say that we are getting a lot of support from the government also, from various NGOs also, and maybe Global Climate Fund and IFC and World Bank also to carry out uh, and move towards our roadmap of carb, uh, carbon negative by 2040. We are working on various uh, uh, renewable power projects. We are working on replacing fuel with the agro fuel. As well, we are also now working on, like I said, on CCU and all such projects, which will give us not only the reduction in CO2, but increase in profitability. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stingy, on behalf of everyone. We really appreciate your contribution. Um, good luck with all the work that you're doing for the Indian cement industry um, and with your own business, uh, Dalmia. Please uh, come back to Semtech um, at a future date and hopefully um, in better times. So thank you very much, Mr. Mahendra Singhi. Thank you.